Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the KW and KA revision session that Nicola um, asked for. Okay, so here we go. First of all, I'm going to be going through a number of VCAR questions, but also some questions in your NEAP exam. All these questions can be obtained from Dropbox. Then you just have to go into Videos by Miss Pallone. And then you just have to go into KW and KA and there will be a document to get all of the questions. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is talk about acidity. So what does acidity mean? Okay, so when something tastes sour, when something is corrosive, when something is, um, you know, anything else, that I can't think of any other properties by an acid, um, when it reacts with a base, when it reacts with a metal, everything like that, these are all because of the concentration of H+. Now, at 25 degrees Celsius, it's been experimentally found that um, a concentration of H+, which is greater than 10 to the negative 7 molar, will be an acidic solution. That is, it will taste sour, it'll react with bases, it'll turn um, universal indicator reddish on the reddish side. So anything that's a property of acids is because it has a concentration of H plus greater than that. Now, we can talk about H plus as a measure of acidity. That's completely fine. We can say that something with a 10 to the, oh, sorry, with a concentration of H plus equals 10 to the negative 4 molar. We can compare these different solutions, 10 to the negative 7, and we can say, I don't know, 10 to the negative 8 molar. We can say that this is most acidic, this is second and third. In fact, if we're talking about concentration at 25 degrees Celsius, we will actually say that this is basic and this is neutral. But it makes life just a little bit more challenging because we have to talk about concentration of H plus is 10 to the negative 4. That's something that's more acidic than 10 to the negative 7. Whereas we could just say the pH is 4, the pH is 7, and the pH is 8. But that gives us a little bit of a problem because as your concentration of H plus increases, your pH decreases. And this is just because of the negative log relationship between the concentration of H plus and pH. It will be an inverse relationship. As one increases, the other one decreases. So we know that more acidic solutions will have a lower pH but will have a higher concentration of H plus. Now this is really important because we can talk about different acids. So different types of acids have different strength. strengths. Okay, so we can talk about ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is monoprotic, which means that it only has one proton. Uh, we can talk about HCl, also monoprotic. When we say one proton, we should really say one acidic proton. We can talk about HCl, which is also monoprotic, one acidic proton. As you can see, ethanoic acid actually has four protons, but only one that it can donate, therefore only one that will increase the concentration of H plus in solution, okay, and give it that acidic property of being sour and reacting with metals and everything like that. Um, we can talk about H2SO4, which is diprotic, meaning that it has two acidic protons, okay. Now, 
We can talk about concentrations of each of them being 0.1 molar, makes it quite easy. Um, ethanoic acid, this in itself will not taste sour. It is the H plus that it gets rid of. Okay, so the more it reacts in water, because once we add our acid to water, it reacts with water according to the following equation. Okay, so the more of this, really the more of this we have, the more acidic. So ethanoic acid, we show that it's an equilibrium reaction. It doesn't occur to any great extent, and therefore we know that we're not going to get that much of this. HCl, on the other hand, reacts with water completely, meaning that we get HCl, uh, sorry, H3O+. plus. We get a lot more of it in our one molar solution and our conjugate base. So remember the terms of these. This is an acid. This is actually reacting as a base in this example, but we know that water is um, amphiprotic. So if it reacts with a base, it'll act as an acid, but if it reacts with an acid, it'll act as a base. Um, and we know we've got H3O+, plus, which is the conjugate acid, and we've got our conjugate oops, base here. Then we have the final one. So with H2SO4, what it does is it gets rid of its first proton like so. It, so most, of, like all, it pretty much goes to completion, all of the H2SO4 will give, get rid of one H. Plus H3O plus. Then we'll have a case like this, HSO4 minus plus H2O produces SO4, oops, 2 minus, because it doesn't really get rid of its second H that much. So we may want to work out the pH of all of these acids. Okay, so for the HCl it's very easy because before dissociation, uh, we have a concentration of HCl, which is um, 0.1 molar, and we have no H3O and no conjugate base. But after dissociation, we get a concentration of HCl, which is zero, and therefore it must have given rise to 0.1 molar of H3O+. Plus. And Cl minus also 0.1 molar. Okay, so after dissociation, the concentration of H2O plus is 0.1 molar. Now pH equals negative log concentration of H3O plus or negative log concentration of H plus. These are exactly the same thing because as soon as H, H plus doesn't exist in water, as soon as it's in water, it gives us H3O plus. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, therefore it can be used uh, as the same thing. Now, if you want to know the pH of HCl, we simply go negative log 0.1 equals 1. Now, H3, CH3COOH is a little bit more difficult because if you have a look at this, so we want to determine the pH of this one, um, before dissociation we have a, the same as the first example where we only have our acid, we don't have any H3O plus or conjugate base. So we would only have our acid, so that would be at 0.1 molar, and then we have none of the other two. Then after dissociation, we get a very strange example. Depending on its percentage dissociation, say if it's 50% dissociation, we will have 50% left over. 
but we will have also 0.05 molar of HRO plus and 0.05 molar of conjugate base. But we don't actually know, and the way we can tell is through our Ka. All right, now let's have a look at what the Ka actually refers to. So Ka is acidity constant. Okay, oops, acidity constant. Now, if you compare the two, um, you will have, so let's have a look. So it only, it's like an equilibrium constant. So the higher it is, the more products. And in this case, um, our products are the things that make it acidic, well, really just the H3O plus. So the higher the Ka, the more H3O plus, and the higher the acidity, but the lower the pH. So if you have a look, if you had the same concentration of each of these acids, we could rank them from most acidic to least acidic. The one with the highest Ka is, let's see, hydrofluoric? No, nitrous acid. So nitrous acid would be the most acidic and would give us the lowest pH and most acidic. And then we can look at the weakest one. Let's have a look. 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10, so the smallest number. So that's the smallest so far. Yep, ammonium iron. So that would be the highest pH if we had the same concentration. Obviously, if you increase the concentration of ammonium iron, you had it 10 times more concentrated. You've had, you'd have more moles per litre of ammonium, therefore more, maybe more moles per litre of H3O plus. You'd have to check through a calculation. But same concentration, very easy to compare. Just higher Ka, lower pH, more acidic. So if you have a look, Ka is the acidity constant. It talks about, so it's pretty much like K, but doesn't include water. Because water concentration, because the concentration of water is relatively constant at 56 molar in all solutions. It's by far the most abundant, so there'd be no point including it. Also, if you have a look at the states, Let's do ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid, aqueous, plus H2O liquid goes into CH3COO negative plus H3O plus. As you'll notice, these are all the same state and water isn't. Now, I'll just show you something interesting with the VCAR dot point. It actually says, if I can find that PowerPoint, chapter 16 under, you know, actually when we determined K, it really only wants you to be able to, here we go, um, it really only wants you to be able to write out K for homogeneous equilibria. Now, homogeneous equilibria just means for equilibria in the same state. And because we have something that's in a different state, it's very obvious as to why we cannot write out K. Okay? Um, and just keep it like the normal K, as you'll see here. Vicar dot point. Um, Reversible and non-reversible reactions, okay, equilibrium. They want you to do for only for homogeneous equilibrium. So in the same state, 
So water's in a different state. This is not to say that you can never include water. For example, if we're talking about the combustion of methane gas, um, and I'm, I know this is a full reaction, but for, you know, to actually show you guys, if you are actually writing out K for this reaction, because water is a gas, and this would be like a homogeneous equilibrium, you'd actually have to include water in your reaction. Okay, so let's just check if that balances. So that's four, so that's two. So you'd actually have to write it like so. CO2. Okay. So let's go back to this example. Now, <clears throat> we want to find out what the concentration of this is because this will tell us the pH. This is a direct route to pH. We just do negative log of that. So what we do is we have a question. Say if it says 0.1 molar. Okay. That's saying that we've added our acid to water. So in other words, our acid, which looks like this, oops, I'm going to actually show you guys which looks like this with its H attached, we've added it to water. So what it's done is it's gone inside water, it's reacted with it. It's given this to water to form HCO plus, and this is the conjugate base, the CH3C double O negative left over. So the concentration of this, okay, as many of these break up, it breaks up into one of these and one of these. Therefore, these concentrations, number of mole per litre, has to be equal. Okay? That's really important. They don't have to add up, okay, to be the same, you know, they have to be equal. So when we write out our expression of Ka, Ka equals the concentration of CH3C double O negative the concentration of HCO plus over um, CH3COOH. Okay. Now, these two, because they are equal, this times this will have to be like this number times this number. So in other words, one of them squared. So that's why we do this equals H3O plus squared. Now importantly, you can only make this assumption that they're equal if put only acid directly in water. <clears throat> I'll show you an example. If we have a buffer system, a buffer is a, a solution made to resist change in pH, okay? Now, <clears throat> if we have a buffer system, what we're doing is we're adding conjugate base plus acid. So let's have a look at our example again. So conjugate base in the form of a salt. So we might add sodium acetate. So let's look at this example. Oops, C double O negative. Okay. <clears throat> now, this will break up, the one that we give will break up into one of these and one of these exactly one to one ratio but because we're adding more salt we get some more of these and we don't know how like they're not going to be equal because we're physically adding more of the product we're not adding more of this we're adding more of this so this will be higher than that that's the whole point of a buffer but if you're only adding your acid to water like they say one molar solution of h uh ch3c double oh you're good to go so we get this particular equation divided by the concentration of CH3, CWOH. Now, 
0.1 molar CH3, C-O-O-H. We know that Ka equals this over that. We don't know what this is. This is our X. We know what this is because you can get it from your data book. Now, the question is, what is this? Out of that 0.1 molar, some of it will break up. That is very true. But in this scenario, because you're not provided with the concentration of H3O+, plus, there is no way to know how much is left at equilibrium. Because remember, these are all equilibrium concentrations. So we don't know if it's 0.1 molar. If it's 0.1 molar, it really suggests that there's none of this because none of it broke up. But we make the crazy assumption that it doesn't dissociate to work out how much has dissociated. I know, very strange, isn't it? Well, let's work this out. So Ka um, from your data book for ethanoic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 5 equals concentration of H3O plus squared over 0 0.1 molar. So we do that working out. 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 5 times 0.1 square root of this concentration of H3O plus equals 0 0.0013. This is not pH. pH equals negative log concentration of H3O plus equals negative log 0 0.0013 equals Two point eight eight. Okay, let's go back to our acids. HCl has a high, uh, lower pH because it gets rid of more of these. That's the only reason. Okay, it makes more of these because it gets rid of more of its. Sorry, it gets rid of more of its H's. It donates more of its H's to water. That's why a strong acid, by definition, it readily donates H plus to water. Okay. Now this has a lower, uh, has a higher pH because it does not readily donate its H plus in water. Now H2SO4, because it definitely gets rid of that one, we know it will definitely have a pH which is lower than one. But that's all we can say unless we use the Ka of HSO4 minus, which is not provided in your data book. So it should be like point. Eight. Now, I would think actually, so if it got rid of both of its H's completely, the concentration of H plus would be 0.2m, wouldn't it? And if you do negative log 0.2m, it is 0.69. But I would think it's a little bit higher than 0.69 because it does not get rid of its second H to any great extent, as shown by the equilibrium arrows. Okay, so let's talk about that as um, an assumption that we make. Now let me grab that PowerPoint on pH. Now these assumption summary table, that is so important for you guys to memorise. Okay, so if we have a look at the assumption summary table, it's got it quite clearly here. I'll just enlarge it. You guys can see that, right? So I'll just enlarge it. Now, um, 
Oh. Now, if you have a look at this one, the one that we were talking about over here, if you're just given your Ka and your concentration of your asset initially, the assumption that you make is that the asset initially equals the one at equilibrium. This is absurd because we are calculating the amount that it dissociates um, by assuming that none of it dissociates. We're assuming that the ionization of the weak acid is negligible in terms of uh, what we will get. Um, like with our sig figs that we use, we're assuming that not much dissociates. We are also assuming that the concentration of H2O plus at equilibrium equals the concentration of conjugate base at equilibrium. That makes sense as we're only adding our acid to water and it breaks off to one and one. Okay, so let's talk about another thing that you guys need to know about and that is percentage dissociation. So let's say that um, we had something like HCl, it dissociates, so it started off as 0.1 molar, we know that it 100% dissociates, so in the end all of that 0.1 molar of HCl has turned in 0.1 molar of H2O+. Now how would you show that it's 100% dissociation? Well you do the concentration of H2O+, or the concentration of conjugate base because both will tell you how much it dissociated because they're equal um, divided by the concentration of HCl initially. Very important. If we did the concentration of HCl at equilibrium then that would be zero. Consequently these have to be at equilibrium then we times by 100 because 0.1 molar divided by 0.1 molar times by 100 equals 100% dissociation which is what we expect. Now let's do it for CH3COOH. We know that the initial amount that we put in, so we want to work out percentage um, dissociation. We know that the initial amount that we put in is 0.1 molar as our question told us that, we know that the concentration of H2O plus at equilibrium, we calculated that to be um, 0.0013. So the percentage dissociation is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 0.1 times by 100. Let's actually just calculate that. 1.3% dissociation. Pretty much a weak acid. Okay, so let me just double check something. 1.7 times 10 to the power of negative 5 times 0.1. And let's give it to the pencil. It's like 1 times 100. Okay. Now let's do a, another example. What if it gives you the pH? So it says the pH of ammonium is, I don't know, 4. And the concentration of ammonium added, like let's just say concentrate, it says the concentration of ammonium ions is 0.5. O2 molar. No, let's do a bit more. 0.5 molar. Okay, gives us a pH of four. So a question like this might say, um, if the concentration of O, oh, if the pH of and 0.5 molar NH4 plus is 4, what is the, what is the, uh, um, 
ka value. Okay, so because ka equals concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of conjugate base over the concentration of acid and these are all equilibrium remember unless we're making assumptions um, because it's this um, if we are given a question in a VCAR exam they might give us something from here a lead into here is pH because we can work that out from pH they might give us something from here or something from here now we've already done an example where they've given us this and this and they want us to find this out but now we are given um, this and this and we want to find this out okay so then we'll go through the final example now we know that this can be rearranged pH equals negative log 10 concentration of H3O plus therefore 10 to the power of negative pH equals concentration of H3O plus so all you have to do is 10 to the negative 4 molar is our concentration of H3O plus and because we're assuming like the, it just says that our acid's been added to water so the concentration of conjugate base must be 10 to the negative 4 molar as well so we'll start off by writing an expression of the reaction in water which all Ka refers to so this is a reaction in water when it reacts with water oops H2O we get ammonia and we get notice that ammonia is aqueous you and I think some of you write gas a lot now ammonia is very very soluble in water I'll show you why quickly ammonia looks like this it has a lone pair there so it has five electrons in that shell so one two three four five and so this is what it looks like now that's the name of that shape is um, triangular pyramidal and for this reason because that has a delta negative and these are all delta positive for this reason um, it's very polar because it can um, bond with water via hydrogen bonding remember NO or F bonded to a H so that would be the hydrogen bond so it's very polar the only way you'll see it as a gas is if we actually say that we boil the ammonia out and that is because the melting point of ammonia melting point of ammonia is lower than H2O so it'll come out even if water's still in the liquid state but if we're not doing that, so and especially homogeneous equilibria, we do it as aqueous. So we know the concentration of this, we know the concentration of this. Do we know the concentration of this? Now it says this in the question, but remember that that must be only found because they've actually added 0.5 moles of this per litre. Now we only make the assumption that this, so this is the initial acid concentration we only make the assumption that the initial acid concentration equals equilibrium if we're not given H3O plus because H3O plus tells us how much it dissociates okay remember that you know say if 0.5 molar which it is and it gives off 10 to the negative 4 molar it means that at the end you know there'll be x molar left over because it's given off some of its h plus won't be the so this would be before dissociation after some of it will be left over so and it will add up to here so in other words the concentration of nh4 plus at equilibrium equals the concentration of nh4 plus initially minus the concentration of NH4 plus that is dissociated or concentration of H4 plus. So equals 0.5 minus 
10 to the negative 4. 0.4999. Now that's quite a small amount as expected. So Ka equals concentration of NH3 times HO plus over NH4 plus equals um, And where's the RNH3? 10 to the negative 4 squared or times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 0.4999. So 10 to the negative 4 squared divided by 0.499 equals 2 times 10 to the negative 8. eight. Remember, it doesn't have any units. As you can see, we're quite far from its actual Ka, but this is at 25 degrees. It may be at a different temperature. Okay, and that's when your Ka would change. So let's have a look at the assumptions that we just made. So if you're given the concentration, uh, if you're given the concentration of your acid initially in pH, you don't make that assumption. Okay. What you do is you work out the concentration of acid at equilibrium by doing acid initially minus conjugate base or H zero plus because they're the same. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through the final one because it's actually the same as this one. So whenever you're given pH or anything that tells you how much it's dissociated. You don't need need to make that assumption, okay? Now, still, you know, 99% of the state makes that assumption, but that's why you guys will do better than the state. Okay, so I guess the final thing we need to go through before we do just a few practice problems is KW. So the ionization, self-ionization of water. So we know that water is amphiprotic. That means that it can act as an acid or a base. Now, we know that it can react to it itself to a very small extent to give us H2O plus and OH minus. Let's say that this one became the OH minus. It means that it donated its H to that. And this one would be the acid. This one would be the base. This one would be the conjugate base. This one would be the conjugate acid. And these would be the conjugate acid base pairs. Okay? So very important to remember that. Now, we know it does so to a very small extent. How do we know? Because if we check the conductivity of water, it's very, very low. Because water as a dipole doesn't conduct but its ions conduct. So if there's not many ions, not much conducting happening, and we can see that. Now, we know that um, at 25 degrees, the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH negative equals 10 to the negative 14. Okay? Um, they found that, like, let's say we were to write out K, concentration of H2O plus times OH negative over concentration of H2O squared. Okay, this is not KW. What they've done is because this remains relatively constant at 56 molar or 56 molar squared, what they've done is they've times it out. And they've made this KW. Okay, and this changes as temp changes. If we do the negative log of H0 plus, um, we get pH. If we do the negative log of OH negative, we get POH. That's why it equals 14, but only 
at 25 degrees Celsius. Let's say that um, at 100 degrees Celsius, um, Kw equals 10 to the negative 13, the pH scale will only go up to 13. Okay. So pH would have to be either less than or equal to 13. Okay, so we actually change the pH scale. That's very important. Okay, so let's go through an example which asks this. Now this is from your um, oops, where have we got it? From your MEEP exam, your 2014 MEEP exam, which is also on Edmodo. And I think here. So consider the following formulas. Concentration of HCO plus squared, concentration of OH negative, blah, blah, blah. Which of the above could be used to determine the self ionization? So we want to determine KW. Now, KW equals concentration of OH negative times the concentration of HCO plus. Now, if it's pure water, these two are equal, okay, because for it, so for neutral solutions, which pure water is neutral as well, or pure water, we know that this is defined by a concentration of HCO plus equals the concentration of OH negative. It is not defined by the concentration of HCO plus equals 10 to the negative 7. Similarly, it's not defined by pH equals 7 because the pH scale changes. So Acid, uh, sorry, water may have a pH of six under, you know, different temperatures. We know that temperature is the only way you can change Ka or Kw because K or A or Kw are similar to K. Okay, so if we change the concentration, it won't change. Now, we know that these two are equal, so in other words, the concentration of HCO plus squared equals Kw just of pure water. So we know that 1 is correct. 2 is saying concentration of OH negative times concentration of HCO plus, which is times 10 to the negative pH. So that's right. Now this one, H2O times the value of K, well that's not right because... It's H2O squared times the value of K, which is KW. So that's wrong. Okay. Now, 1 and 2 only, so we'll give us A. Now, we want to look at the breakdown of H2O gives us H3O plus plus OH negative. We want to have a look at the breakdown of that. Now, we know that it's endothermic through experimentation. So basically, um, we have plus heat on this side. So as we increase temperature, Le Chatelier says it partially opposes the change and it shifts that way. So as we increase temperature, we actually increase Kw, okay? So let's have a look. The self-ionization reaction of pure water is endothermic. If the temperature of pure water is decreased, let's turn on that line. If the temperature is decreased, so if temperature decreases, Kw decreases. How do the value of pH? So Kw decreases, it's actually going this way. Okay, because we want to change the temperature. So it wants to go that way, meaning that concentration of HCO plus would decrease, meaning that pH would increase as you decrease temperature. So Kw decreases and pH increases. Okay, now let's do a couple of questions from the document that's in videos made by Miss Pallone. Now, I'm just trying to look so... Yep, 
Here we go. So what we're going to do is V car questions. So it's basically V car questions. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of those now. A couple of multi choice, fairly easy. Now let's have a look. So pure water at 100 degrees Celsius has a pH of 6.14. So because it has a low pH, let's try and get these both in the picture. Here we go. Because it has a low pH, what's actually happened is the concentration of HCO plus has increased and for that to happen, it had to have favoured a forward reaction, meaning that the self-ionisation of water is endothermic. Now B, pH measurements are unreliable. That's total you know, shizen. So pH measurements are affected by the bubbles of hydrogen gas. No, also shizen. Um, here, the concentration of HCO plus is not equal. No, that's wrong because by definition, the concentration of HCO plus always has to equal OH negative in neutral solutions and in pure water. Okay, so if we have a look at another example, so what does the term weak acid mean? We already went through that. Um, so the term weak acid means that it is an acid that does not readily dissociate in water. Now the state you know went horribly in that um, answer. So if we finally get to... Um, basically, the way you can see it is VCAR questions by topic. Now, this would be a 2012 question 3A. If you want to have a look at the answers, you simply go into VCAR questions by topic. Um, sorry, you go into VCAR exams, you go into 2012 answers. And because it's question 3, we can easily get to it. So, question 3. We know that 3A, so 74% of the state got it right. A weak acid does not completely ionise in water. So 26% got zero for that question, which is pretty sad. But anyway, let's have a look. So what is the term weak acid? Why are two K values listed for malic acid? So let's have a look at malic acid. Now, malic acid has two acidic protons. I know this because it has two carboxyl groups. And each acidic proton will have a different Ka value. Unless it was totally under the same environment, which it's not because this one's near an OH. Okay. So the equation related to the first Ka of malic acid is this. Write an appropriate chemical equation that relates to the second Ka of malic acid. So this is quite simple. I'm going to see actually how the state went. Okay, so they accepted because it's a diprotic acid because it has two protons. It's able to donate two protons. It contains two carboxyl groups, undergoes two-stage ionization. And then they wanted this. So basically what you've done is you've taken the conjugate base just like we did with H H SO4 minus and we just show it further reacting with water, making sure you have the equilibrium arrows. Okay, so those are really easy. That's why I'm skipping through them. But here, let's have a look. So sorbic acid, uh, yeah. According to the following equation. Okay, so... The antimicrobial activity of sorbic acid is retained because of an equilibrium expression. Okay, so basically um, this is what's happening, you know, um, giving it this property, but it's not actually it reacting with water, so it has nothing to do with the um, Ka. All right, how would the addition of a small amount of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid affect the concentration of sorbic acid? Okay, let's have a look. 
So the concentration of hydrochloric acid. So we add um, HCl, which we know will give us H+, which I would have a look at whereabouts in this equation it actually affects, and it does affect the OH negative because it reacts with OH negative to give us water. So in other words, it's reducing OH negative and therefore resulting in a net forward reaction. So whenever they ask a question like this and then they have the equilibrium arrows, they really want you to talk about Le Chatelier's. So it reduces the concentration of OH negative, net forward reaction because it wants to partially oppose the change and therefore it would increase the concentration of sorbic. Now let's have a look at a perfect VCAR answer. should be something very similar. Okay, the concentration of sorbic acid would increase because the added HCl reacts with the OH negative aqueous concentration. Uh, OH negative aqueous. It reduces the OH negative concentration, thus causing the reaction to shift to the right to partially oppose the change. Okay, so the state went shockingly. Let's just have a look at a couple of the reasons. So although many excellent responses, it was not handled in Martin. So it was basically an application of Le Chatelier's principle. Increasing the concentration of water. Oh, that's interesting. However, the concentration of water in aqueous solution is effectively constant. See, you really can't talk about that because it stays at around 56 molar. Okay, so arguments for a decrease were unexpectedly common. Oh, they thought adding HCl will be the same as adding sorbic acid. Well, that's really silly. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Calculate the percentage dissociation of sorbic acid when the pH is 4.76. Okay, let's do that one. So we know that the Ka of sorbic equals, where is it, has it in, up here, yeah, 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5, okay, and we know that, actually that's all we know so far, isn't it, oh, we know the pH, okay, pH equals 4.76. So do we have enough to do this? Ka equals concentration of conjugate base times the concentration of H3O plus, bang, 10 to the negative 4.76, and here, 10 to the negative 4.76, divided by concentration of sorbic at equilibrium. Yeah, we know enough because we can sub this into here. Now, if we tidy that up a little bit, 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5 equals concentration of, oops, 10 to the negative 4.76 squared divided by sorbic at equilibrium. So sorb at equilibrium, so that's easy algebra equals 1.75 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay, do the square root of that. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, sorry. It's not so easy. 10 to the negative 4.76 squared. So we just times that out and we do divided by 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. My bad. 10 to the power of negative 4.76 squared divided by 1.75 times 10 to the power of negative 5.
equals 1.73 times 10 to the negative 5. I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep. Yeah. Um, molar. Now that's importantly that we know that it's at, actually at equilibrium. So when we work out the percentage dissociation, we need to really make sure that we have the concentration of HRF plus over the concentration of sorb initially. Now, if we know the concentration of sorb at equilibrium, the concentration of sorb initially will be very easy because we do concentration of HRF plus plus sorb at equilibrium. So I've just rearranged that equation I applied before. E equals 10 to the new 4.76 plus 1.73 times 10 to the negative 5. So if we add those two together, 10 to the negative 4.76, we get uh, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the negative 5. So we do 3.5 times 10 to the negative 5. And we do 10 to the negative 4.76 over that times 100 equals. So we do so 10 to the negative 4.76 divided by this times 100 equals, and I think it's exactly 50% dissociation, 50%. Okay, let's keep looking through the questions. Oh, this one's a nice easy one. Which of the following acids um, same concentration, so remember you're just comparing Ka, will have the highest pH um, all we do is literally compare the Ka, so go down, alright, so 0.1 molar of these, now let's compare now we've got nitrous acid which is over here let's highlight them um, ethanoic acid, methanoic acid, and hypobromates. Okay, so if you compare them, which one has, so which one will have the highest pH? Is the lowest Ka, which is hypobromous, which is D. Okay, now let's just see, just for kicks, let's see how the state went. So question 20, 2011. You should always be um, looking at the answers. That's where I get most of my teaching from actually. So if you have a look, so question 20, so D, did we say D? I think so. Hyperbromus, D? Now I've lost it. Sorry. There we go. Yep, D, sorry. Um and how'd they go? Fifty-two percent? Oh, that's shocking. So basically with no other information supplied, the data book should have been an immediate reference for students. All the acids are weak, so the acids with the highest pH will have the lowest concentration of H3O plus. Since all solutions were 0.1 molar, the acid with the lowest concentration of HRO plus is the one that ionizes the least, therefore with the lowest Ka. Ka. Okay, let's have a look at some more. Now, we have a look. Run an equation for the reaction of methanoic acid with water. That's a little bit easy. Okay, this one's a buffer one. I'm not going to do this one because we did it in class. Um, I'm going to do one from NEEP from a buffer.
Okay, let's have a look at this one. A 10 ml sample of 0.01 mol HCl is diluted by adding water. Okay, let's have a look. Now, I want to draw it out like one of those little concentration curvy things. So we want to know the concentration of H plus and OH minus. Let's have a look. So we know that it's an acidic solution, so the concentration of H plus is higher than OH minus. So at first, so it's 0.1 molar HCl. Now HCl will go straight. Oh, we don't need to do a curve. There's no Le Chatelier's. Hmm. So all we're looking at is HCl plus Cl. I know it's reacting with water. And we have water by the self-ionization. I guess we can look at this one. So when we dilute, what happens is we decrease the concentration of H3O+. plus. Now water will act to oppose that change because when we dilute, we dilute the concentration of H3O+. Plus. Um, and what we do is we want to oppose that change. So it will result in a net forward reaction by water. We'll go into more HCl plus, but it'll never reach the original, and more OH negative. So OH negative will be higher than the original, and H plus will be lower than the original. Okay, now let's have a look at that. Question 10, uh, question 8, 2010. Ooh. Oh, okay, yeah. V car exams, question eight, two thousand and ten. So it's B. Is that what we said? B? Let's just make sure. So over here it should be. Over here. Oh, why do I keep losing it? No, it's not that one. Here we go. B, decrease, increase. Let's have a look. They've got such a long explanation. HCl, it is a strong acid and it ionizes completely to that. The concentration of HCl plus times OH negative has to equal a constant. So if you decrease one, you have to increase the other. You could just look at it like that. But let's have a look. So it decreases this. This one increases. So it moves to the right. Okay. Okay. So you can just look at it like that. So as the concentration of H plus decreases, the other one has to increase because it has to equal a particular constant. We're not changing the temperature, we're just diluting it. Okay. So but this works as well. So let's have a look at another one. See if there's any more difficult ones. No, that's too easy. No. I guess this one. Let's see how far we've gone down. Okay, so let's have a look. 
So lactic acid is a weak acid found in milk. The molar mass of lactic acid is 90 grams. Great. In an experiment, so a student dissolved 4.5 grams of lactic acid in 500 mils of water. Calculate the molar concentration of H3O+. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice and easy one. So let's have a look. So what we know is that the molar mass of lactic acid... 90 grams per mole. We also know that the mass of lactic acid we've put in is 4.5 grams and we know the volume is 500 mil. Okay, so easily can determine the concentration of lactic acid. So moles of lactic equals mass over molar mass, 4.5 over 90. O point O five mole concentration of lactic N over V O point O five divided by O point five equals O point one. So this is the concentration of lactic initially. Now do we know the Ka of lactic acid? I wonder if it's in our data book. Lactic acid, so grab, quickly grab our data book over here. Ka, perfect, 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. So Ka equals, um, this is our lactic, so lactic will break up into, it will react with water and it will break up into H3O+. Plus and conjugate base. So if we write this out in terms of Ka equals the concentration of conjugate base times the concentration of H3O plus divided by the concentration of lactic acid at equilibrium. But here you'll see we only have Ka. Ka equals, oops, Ka equals 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4, the concentration of our acid at equilibrium. Because we don't know how much it's dissociated, we do make that assumption that the amount at equilibrium equals the amount initially, so it's 0.1 molar. So then, and these two, they're equal because we're only adding our acid to water. So H zero plus squared over O point one equals one point four times ten to the negative four. Concentration of H zero plus equals um, times point one. Take the square root of that. O point double O three seven molar. That's not pH. Oh, is that all it's asking for? Oh, and to three sig figs is point three seven four molar. Now let's have a look. Calculate the pH. Nice pH. So this is part two equals negative log concentration of H zero plus. By the way, you don't have to put the ten there. It's assumed if you don't put it there. So two point four. Now let's just check what percent of the state got that right, considering it was in two thousand and ten, which I have just here. So what percent of the state got that right? Now this was question um, two. Oh, we don't have the right sig figs, 2.43. Now, question two, so what? 52% of the state got that right. Okay. So let's have a look at the next question. I think we only have time for... 
Okay, this one's really good. I did actually want to go through one like this. Okay, this one stumped a lot of the state. Now, it's saying lactic acid is diluted. Now let's have a look. H3O plus conj base. Okay, now what happens is we will dilute this solution. So we decrease the concentration of H3O plus and OH negative. And let's just say that this is lactic acid concentration. We know that lactic acid breaks down into conj base and H3O plus. What happens is we decrease the concentration of all three, but we there's more particles on this side. So what happens is it will shift to the right, okay, um, basically because more particles here. Remember that it's water here too, but because the concentration remains constant, we don't include it in e uh, Le Chatelier's principle, you know, because the concentration doesn't change. So because there's more particles on this side, when we dilute a system, it moves to the side with more particles. So what will happen is we'll decrease the concentration of lactic acid even further and increase these two. Even though we will never make it the same as before equilibrium. So the pH, because the concentration of H plus has decreased, the pH will increase. But the percent ionization will also increase because we have actually shifted it to the right. Now, I really want you guys to remember that because I have a feeling that they're going to ask that on the exam. So just remember this conclusion. As a weak acid is diluted, the concentration, oops, concentration of H3O plus decreases, but not as much as it would if it was a strong acid because it partially opposes the change to increase the pH, increase the concentration of H3O. So the pH technically um, increases, but self-ionization, oh sorry, um, but ionization of the acid slash dissociation percentage also increases. That's really important because if we're talking about 0.1 molar HCl, and 0.1 molar um, HNO2 nitrous acid, because this is a weak acid, if we dilute both by the same extent, this will change more, change more in pH units. This one will change less because it partially opposes the change by increasing the ionization. Okay, so let's have a look at another one now. That's pretty much it. Okay, I'm just going to do one more from your neat booklet and then we're good to go. So I really want you guys to stick around for this one. Now, I think it's just a little bit further. Okay, here. I actually want you guys to really read it and have a go before I just go through the answers, okay? It's really important to try and do that. So you can pause the video and have a turn. And you've all got this. It's the NEAT 2014 exam that I gave you guys in class. Now, I've pre-prepared my answers so I don't have to waste time calculating, but I've just misplaced them. Um, I bet you are hard. Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, let's have a look. So, I hope you've all had a good look at these questions before we go. Now, so applications of equilibrium theory naturally in systems. 
Okay, this is a buffer system. Okay, so a buffer is an equilibrium mixture of a weak acid, okay, and its conjugate base. That means we've actually added some of this and this. That means that these two are not equal. Okay, now, okay, shown by the following equation. So let's have a look. In 500 mils, so it's just a fancy way of writing 500 milliliters because I want two sig figs, of an aqueous solution, there is 0.250 mole of each this and this in equilibrium. So using the value of the acidity constant, so here, calculate the pH. So, so Ka equals concentration of H2O plus. All they have done here is not put in water, so they haven't put in H plus, but H plus doesn't exist in water. And we know that this is occurring in water. So you still write it out like normal. HPO4 2 minus divided by H2PO4 minus equals. So this does not equal that. So you can't do that squared because it's a buffer solution. We've actually added more of that. But we know the concentration of HPO4, don't we? Um, we know the moles and we know the litres. They're equal. So the concentration of HPO4 equals the concentration of HPO4 minus, oops, 2 minus, equals N over V, 0.25 divided by 0.5 equals 0.5 molar. Okay, so 0.5 here, chuck an 0.5 here, and Ka equals 6.4 times 10 to the neg 8. So once we do our maths, so 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 times 0.5 divided by 0.5, the concentration of H2O plus equals um, 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 molar, and the pH equals negative log. 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 equals 7.2. Then we have a look at another one. So 0 0.005 mole of HCl is now added to the 500 ml solution described in part I. If all of the added HCl was used up, that means that because we're talking about an equilibrium, H2O4 minus plus H2O produces, it should really be equilibrium now, so that's a bit naughty, but anyway, H2O plus, because when we're adding HCl, think about it like this. What we're doing is we're increasing the concentration of H2O plus by adding HCl. We saw that in another example before. Now it's saying it's all used up by a net back reaction. So all of it is used up. Okay. So we really have to be careful here. Now for all of it to be used up, we could be talking about, you know, our table type situation. Let's not include water. H P O four two minus let's just say that initially how much do we have how much is our change and how much is our equilibrium mole and how much is our equilibrium concentration. Now if all of it's used up, that means that 0.005 mole of it will react with HPO4 2 minus to produce H2PO4 minus, right? It means that for it to be used up, it actually has to react with this. So the change has to be, and because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, minus 0.005 mole. And because we start with 0.25 mole, we can work out the equilibrium mole. Really important. If you don't understand this, you have to come and see me. So 
basically we know it's reacting, they're reacting together, so we know that um, the amount of this that's eaten up will be the amount that reacts with it, and because it's a one to one ratio. Now it's going backwards, right? Because it wants to decrease the concentration of H3O plus. So this one will be a positive change. So it'll be positive 0 0.005 mole. Anyway, the initial mole of H2PO4 minus was also 0 0.25. So if we do this, 0 0.255 mole and 0 0.245 mole. And if we work out concentration, we just divide by volume. So this one equals 0.51 molar and this one equals 0.49 molar. Then it says here, using the value of the acidity constant, calculate the pH. So Ka equals concentration of H3O plus, that's what we'll need to find out pH, HPO4 to minus, and divide by H2PO4. Minus. We know that Ka equals 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8. Concentration of HPO plus. So HPO4 minus is 0 0.49 and this is 0 0.51. So concentration of HPO plus equals um, 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8 times 0.51 divided by 0 0.49 equals, what does it equal? 6.4 times 10 to the negative 8. Now, is it? Negative logs. equals 7.19 okay so so about 7.2 so if you have a look here tells you that the change in pH which occurs when 0 0.005 mole of HCl is added to pure water so we know that HCl breaks up into H2O plus and Cl minus so we know that when it goes into pure water that the concentration of H plus equals the concentration of HCl equals 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.5, 0 0.01. Um, the pH equals negative log concentration of H plus, negative log 0 0.01 equals 2. And the pH of pure water started off at 7, so change of 5. Wow, would it be change when it's added to water instead of when it's added to this buffer system? So considering your answer to these, how effective is this at controlling change, pH changes? Very effective. Basically remains same pH. 7.2 is very similar to 7.19. Resists change of what would be 5 pH units. If water and not buffer. What is not a very effective buffer? Um, why don't we just do? Oh no. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Now, if you need me to do any more videos, I'm quite happy to do it. I've borrowed the document camera, so just let me know. Okay.